Hey gang, this will be a, an interesting test for tonight. We're actually going to, I'm going to give you this presentation I wanted to uh, do in, in person. I'm going to give it to you in this format. Um, bear with me, just kind of playing around with this right off the bat. I'm sitting here in my dining room thinking, ah, what the heck, we'll show you a different way to present some content. Um, this is a, a kind of an update to what we have talked about in the, the small tech, the educational technology group. I'll take you just through a couple of slides real quick and uh, and just kind of tell you kind of the, some of the topics that we were talking about as, as we were uh, discussing these things uh, from January on. So that's where I'll start. So let me push through these uh, PowerPoints. You'll see me look down every now and then. It's kind of habit. Sorry. I kind of stick down to see, make sure where my mouse is and make sure I'm not clicking in anything uh, that might be pretty ugly showing up on screen here. So hopefully we'll stick with the PowerPoint presentation. Thanks for bearing with me here. Uh, and we'll move forward. So, in essence, in January when we decided to get together, we had that little breakout session in January, and we had, uh, I think the scheduling was done at that point, and I think the athletics was done at that point as well. Um, we decided to sit down in the lecture hall and started talking about what we uh, what we could do in the world of educational technology here at Bristol Academy. And it turned out to be a pretty um, pretty energetic discussion, I would say, for the most part. I think there were some great ideas, and that kind of set us on our way to, to get going on uh, some of the things that we were talking about down the road. Um, you know, there, there was great, great conversation happening. Um, I think we do an okay job with educational technology, so there were some points I was trying to make. It was an interesting group of people because, quite honestly, there were not that many teachers there that, that particular day, and that could have been for various reasons because other meetings were happening or it was just just a crazy day. Uh, we did discuss some of the, the overall general philosophy about technology at Bristol Academy, how people feel about it, um, you know, so how, how they get help, frustrations, um, and those kinds of discussions started off the, the plan. Uh, on that day, and then we did we did start talking about how we use technology in the classroom here, education-wise. Uh, it was nice to see a couple of teachers chime in that day, and uh, obviously full with iPads right there too, as well taking notes. So that was that was an interesting piece, um, and then really had a, a long discussion about what we think, where we think technology will be in our kids' lives. Uh, I know Facebook, you know, they use Facebook very well. Um, they use YouTube very well. They struggle with most of the other pieces in technology. So that, that discussion came up, and, and how can we as educators think about how to help them use technology in an educational way and in an educational format. So that was kind of our discussion in January. From there, we moved on and decided to uh, start breaking out into, um, let me move myself down here, Whoop. We started to break out into ideas of online learning and bringing those ideas back to, to the uh, academic affairs committee. So that that became interesting at that point. We, um, so we came forward and tried to think about what does online learning mean. I I had coined some other terms, you know, digital learning. The online piece was I I kind of was like going, ah, I'm not sure that really describes what it is. Uh, we started talking about digital learning. And then we started discussing a, bu a bunch of different things. What does it mean for BA? And I know that uh, there's been a lot published right now in terms of online is the way to go. I know colleges in particular are really struggling with, with this concept of if, if everything is being offered online, then you know, where is their place in all of this? Uh, you know, MIT offering courses on, online for free, for that matter. Um, so you, you got you got some interesting ideas happening in education these days, and it's going to be very very interesting down the road for colleges to figure out where they where they lie on that. University of Phoenix, another great example where all their courses were online, and they were the first to kind of get out there and do that. So where does all this come about for BA? What does it mean for BA based on, upon our mission statement, preparing you know kids for college and beyond? That that obviously we've got to look at the colleges and see what the heck is going on in the online world. So that, that was a big discussion too as well. Uh, it was nice to see, you know, there, there was some information for online learning in the strategic plan. I know there was pieces to it in there. Uh, it was also nice to see Chris Harlow. Many of you remember Chris Harlow, who's now a board member, had some interest in this area too. So he got involved too as well. So to get, to, to get that board perspective, 
was very important for us too. We had a nice meeting with between Fletcher, Travis, and I with Chris about again some of the implications of online learning. So from that discussion came this idea of we really should try a pilot program. If this is something we really want to work towards and do, uh, we, we probably should see what it's all about and try a pilot program. I know Travis was very interested in, in the pilot program. Uh, and that, that's what we did. We said, okay, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll set up a pilot program. We started discussing what classes would work best, who's ready to go. start thinking about a pilot program and, and online learning. You've got to digitize pretty much your whole entire content piece of your class. Travis willingly said, let me give it a whirl. I've already kind of thought about it with Rogues, Rebels, and Revolutionaries. So that's kind of the class that we picked to, to kind of see what, what the heck we could do here at BA and, and how our students would react to that, which was a huge piece to what we were looking to do as well. So that's the class we picked. Travis willingly volunteered, raised his hand, and said, okay, uh, I will, uh, I'll definitely give this a whirl. And, and so he took his, uh, his students and discussed what he was going to do with them when they got back in, in January and said this is the way it's going to go. I know initially he, uh, he started out by straight out saying, you know, we're probably not going to have class for a bit. I want to see how you guys do with not having class but having the content all available to you 24-7, um, assigning, doing assignments by week, those kinds of things. So those were the initial phases. I think there was a couple of challenges involved and, and, and I know Travis and I had talked briefly before going into this, this idea that we're not quite sure what's going to happen with our students. We talk an awful lot about the skills that, are, that our students need in order to succeed. And what we really figured out very, very quickly was as much as we like to think they're pretty tech savvy, they're not. They're truly not. Um, they struggled with the idea that if you didn't show up to class, did, did you really have to do the work when Mr. Doobie posts on, the, on his Google site or, or on the website or on any assignment, this is due on Friday, January 27th. Did you really mean it was due January 27th? And there were some discussions about the clarity and how things, so you can understand, obviously with uh, loopholes, we give our kids little, little loopholes and they walk through them because they think they're absolutely huge. So there was a good, a good little feeling out process in that regard. Um, and I know that Travis was extremely, <laughs> you know, he was not concerned, but he, he was, we, we knew we had to identify some of these skills that, that were new to the online environment, uh, as opposed to actually them showing up in class on a scheduled basis so they get handed out on a piece of paper. The scheduling piece became very, very different, and this, the scheduling of assignments and so on and so forth. Um, so we we quickly talked about developing. I, mean, I know these discussions are having having happening in different levels. We discussed the idea of creating an, an online idea where we're going to add to those skill sets, and we're going to say these are the skill sets you need to survive an online class, and. In, in the end, it's all going to work out because our students, make no mistake about it, at some point in time, our students will take an online course somewhere. Absolutely. I, I have no doubt in my mind they will take an online course somewhere. So we've got to start to talk about what skills does it take to actually create an online course or actually take an online course and be successful at it. Because nine times out of ten, they're generally not always the same skills you would be by just sitting in a class. Um, so this was a whole interesting process for us. So um, so there, there was our pilot program. Uh, what, we, what we did and what we talked about, and again, this was conversations with Fletcher as well, between primarily Fletcher and Travis, I'm sure, uh, we decided that they decided to come up with this idea that we're going we're gonna to blend this classroom idea. We're going to say, okay, it is an online course, but we also understand that some students are having an extremely hard time when a teacher's not checking in with them on a daily basis. Um, they tend not to do their work. They tend to get confused about what the assignments are, when they're due. Um, you do need that interaction with a teacher in terms of bouncing ideas off of it. So this blended idea started coming around where Travis, in essence, said that if you have a certain you have a certain grade level you you can show up certain days and if you if so if you're great if you're doing fine and he had i think he had a couple of students in there in fact i know of one definitely that he had in there that was doing absolutely fine he loved the course just basically allowing himself to to do whatever it is he wanted to do as quickly as he could 
And uh, so he just moved through the course. So th- the time is the carrot. The bottom line is, and I'll talk a little bit about time in a few seconds, but what we were finding out was that, hey, you're putting in your time into this class. Do you have to show up on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? If you're getting all the assignments done, you're doing great work on the papers, you, you're okay, you're assimilating to this online environment, what, why should you come to class? Because you're actually learning through the class and, and the content is being passed, passed on. Um, so he had some kids in that area and then he had some others who were nowhere near close to that, that level. So the class commitment level based on the success. How, how successful are you in class would tell you how much more time you need to spend actually in class with Travis talking about those skills. And what Travis, I think what Travis found out was is that when the content piece is, is gone from, from those areas, you can really focus a lot of time on the skills piece and say, okay, really, what, what's going on here? Why, why are you having such a hard time with this class? Or why are, you, why are you having such a hard time completing this assignment on that day? Those kinds of discussions tended to happen. So it was pretty intriguing in that point. It, it, and, uh, and again, those, those are some concepts that, that uh, I'll get to a little bit later, but um, it's one of those things that I'm, I'm going to tell you right now is going to keep coming up in our lives here at Bridgeton Academy, that time piece. More instructor support needed for weaker students. That was a, that was a, a definite, uh, definite way to go. Uh, Travis also, I know he had given me some notes and started talking about maybe looking at the way assignments were divided out, um, you know, due dates, those kinds of things. Should I, should I just kind of lay out the whole entire course for them and, and throw out the due dates all at once, or should I uh, go week by week and say, okay, guys, this week, this is what you need to do. Um, so I know I know those conversations are happening too, and it'll be interesting to see what uh, what Travis comes up with in in that regard. So we have this idea of the and, and I know we've used this at Bristol Academy this idea of the toolbox and thank you Peter Gately, thanks Pete, for the toolbox scenario. Um, I've run with it. You're going to see something I've done a couple of times in some other presentations, but uh, we we like to use this idea that kids have a toolbox that we're filling up, we're helping them fill up, and we're helping them not only fill up with their tools, but you know, teaching them how to use those tools. And um, I like to think that <laughs> when most kids come in to, to Bristol Academy, their toolbox tends, tends, to, uh, tends to look like, well, I guess I'm pointing in the wrong direction, there we go, the one up top there in the, in the, uh, in the corner with the handy-andy kind of things. Um, they do have some tools. They're not the most mature tools in the world. And uh, that, that's probably the way they look when they pop in. What we like to do at Bridgeton, I know, is, or at least I'd like to think we do, is, is take these tools. let go this way. Hey, I got my pointing finger in the correct position. We like to think that we are taking a look at that toolbox and saying that's what we provide our students. And uh, it, it looks a little bit more mature. There's a couple more tools in there. And so there's a good visual on what I'd like to think of what we do at Bridgeton Academy. I think what we need to, to look at in the next couple of years or so is that toolbox is even changing for all of us and for our students in particular. Uh, the tools that we think are necessary will probably, most of them probably be no longer necessary down the road. So I, I've created this new, new toolbox that I've got right up above here. Um, and that, that's more of a digital toolbox. And, and the tools that are involved in that box are much harder to work with uh, they're much more powerful, obviously, but again, we've got to spend some time in terms of talking to our students about these types of tools that we've got in that toolbox. Not not leaving out the ones over here, uh, the ones at the bottom. We could definitely leave out the uh, the handy andy kind version there, um, but for the most part, the digital tools are are kind of something that I think we're going to need to really focus on. And and that's not just coming from me as a tech director. I'm saying all teachers need to focus on that. So. All right, wrapping it up here real quick. This led to future to some ideas of future discussions, and I know you've, some of you guys have gotten some emails from Sven about uh, some things that we've been reading and discussing. I'd, I'd like to open that up at some point and do a, a, a bigger, broader discussion with a whole bunch of different people, staff included as well, in, in some topics that I think, uh, I think are pretty intriguing, one of which you probably have heard about is the Khan Academy idea, uh, this whole idea of... The, the online lessons and the content coming from an online piece as opposed to from the teacher themselves. And uh, again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but this is something that's on our plate. We've discussed heavily 
uh, in terms of, of some of the tech folks that were there at the original meeting. I know this has been a discussion ongoing with IA as well in terms of, you know, where, where do we see education down the road and, and how is education going to look in the next five years? And that's an interesting question. This concept of flipping the class, which goes along with Khan Academy, you're getting a good introduction as to what I generally look to do in my class. Um, this presentation that I'm putting together I, I'm sitting here and doing it, and granted, it's not the best, probably, and you're all looking at me going, wow, dude, this isn't that great at all, but it, you know what? I'll, I'd take another crack at it if I'd have the time. Um, again, that idea of, as I'm sitting here with my dog eating over here, so you probably hear that going along, and apologize for that. Uh, but in any case, taking content and using other times than class time to give content so that class time becomes important in terms of discussion and bringing our students up to higher levels of thinking. Technology can help, and uh, I, I, I feel very confident right now with some of the testing that I've done in my class that there's some great, great ideas out there that you're going to hear a lot more about. The, the piece that, that Sven had sent out, Stop Stealing My Dream, there's, there's some pieces in there that are, are you know, they're, they're good, to, they're extremely well thought out to, to, in terms of how they react, how they uh, interface with the education piece as a whole, the, the history that's involved with that. Um, if that's something, if you're a Godin fan, you'll love it. Uh, if, if you're a teacher, you probably should read it in one way, shape, or form or another because quite honestly, you're going to have an opinion one way or the other. And I, I think there's some, there's some pieces in that paper that at Bridgeton Academy we need to start discussing. Uh, and again, going down the road of, of what, are, what are we going to look like in the next two to five years. and um, So that, that, that could be exciting too. Creating alternative, alternative uh, content delivery systems. You're seeing one right now. You know, this is, uh, I, I could be standing up. I'm, I'm in the room right there, but I could be standing up and giving you all this. Uh, but, but I know that this was a way for me to kind of show you that there, there are some pieces out there. There's some interesting ideas that we can, we can explore in terms of how we deliver content. Could a kid be sitting in study hall watching this type of a presentation with you? Easily, easily. Uh, he misses something. I remember a conversation we were having today at lunch where, you know, kids in class missing five minutes of class, just tuning out for a quick second. And then all of a sudden they pick their head up and they're going, oh my God, I just missed what you said. Could you repeat it? How frustrating is that for a teacher? You know, how frustrating is it when you spend, uh, you spend 50 minutes of a class discussing content that, if it was done in this vehicle, could be done in three minutes' time, you know, because you don't have all of the other things that, that are going on. So there's some interesting pieces there, too. How about attendance? You know, you got kids missing class all the time. What if, they, what, if it wasn't a, what, if, what if they weren't missing any information? They could go back and see exactly what you did in class and, and cover the same kind of content. So I'll just leave you with those questions. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and then uh, the last one, the, the, the warping time at Bristol Academy. Here's a crazy concept, and, and this is coming down the road too as well within this, this group. What would happen if we looked at the academic day and, and the time of the academic day changed drastically? We've talked about, we've kind of hinted at these ideas before, but Again, going back to that idea that if I've got five minutes of content and I put it together in a five-minute video, I could tell you on Monday in particular, it took me 50 minutes to cover three minutes and 23 seconds of a video of content. It took me 50 minutes in class. Are we making good use of our time? I don't know. Could we make better use of our time? So that's kind of where we're going. I hope this wasn't too much longer than you expected. Um, and Fletcher, I hope this wasn't too much longer than you expected to, but that's kind of where our future discussions lie within that group. But again, it's, it's not a tech, it's not an educational tech group. It's primarily some teachers who use tech and who are interested in it. And IA, um, I know Grady's been involved with those discussions too as well. So there's a, there's a lot of really cool discussions going on in terms of what we do as teachers at Bristol Academy. So if you want to be, be involved in those discussions, let my, uh, my TA who's actually live in the room down there. Uh, his name is Dave as well. Let him know, let Sven know, and let, it, uh, let all those folks know that, hey, next time we start getting together and, and start talking about some of these things, you'd like to be involved just for, uh, just for the sake of, of getting in the discussion. 
thanks for bearing with me. I hope it wasn't uh, wasn't too bad. And, and if again, if you missed anything, you can always rewind the video. If you need the link, I'll give it to you. Thanks.